Fish on Fridays. I'm Al McCauley, and today I want to talk to you about another spectacular piece of Catholic art. The, this one comes to us from Auguste Rodin, and it was uh, created in 1878, and it's called The Preaching of St. John the Baptist. Um, now, let me back up a little bit. Most of us are familiar with Rodin's The Thinker, um, and so it's the same artist, but different, obviously different statue, and I just love this depiction of John the Baptist for a lot of reasons, and that's kind of what I want to unpack today in this episode. First of all, you'll notice that he is standing on two feet. You know, if you know, if all the Gospels mention John the Baptist, and, and what you know about him from the reading of the Gospels, you get some certain things that you can take away, uh, overarching themes about John the Baptist. He was in nature, you know, so you see him depicted nude here. Uh, he was a natural guy. Now, we're told in Scripture that he wore camel's hair and stuff like that, but Rodin wanted to really get that idea that he was out in the wilderness, and, and by the way, nakedness like this also can mean something else. It's not an alluring, provocative thing. It is meant to make us realize that John the Baptist was vulnerable uh, in front of God. He was humble, and everything he has comes from God. And he he was vulnerable in front of that idea, the mercy, the love, the judgment of God. And 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 so are we. You know, how do we make ourselves humble, vulnerable, or naked in a in a sense before our God? But anyway, if you look at the way he's standing, both feet are firmly planted on the ground because John was a man of great conviction. He had vision, he had belief, but he was convicted. He knew what was right and what was wrong, and he was not, not going to hesitate to tell people they needed to get baptized and they needed to repent. And I believe Rodin really shows this, this beautifully here. The other thing I really like about this statue is there's two, look at the two hands, the two fingers um, of John the Baptist. His right hand, he's pointing up toward the sky, and in his left hand, he's kind of pointing down. And it, you can make a, a, it can infer from this that he's pointing about the reality of heaven and, and earth, and the kingdom of God is coming. Uh, that's what he was preaching about the the prepare the way of the Lord, but <laughs> the Lord is coming to earth, and that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is he must increase as I must decrease. You know, in John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 30, John the Baptist says that. He says, he, meaning Jesus, must increase and I must decrease. And so the fingers, you know, kind of point to those realities as well. Both of those realities that, that you know, get ready for the kingdom of God, it's coming to earth, and the idea that he must increase and I must decrease. And what's cool about that is, um, every year, the church celebrates the nativity or birth of John the Baptist on June the 24th. Now, you might gather that we don't, we have no clue when he was born. We don't know if he was born on June 24th or any other month for that matter. There's no indication from scripture whatsoever. So you might ask, well, why on June 24th are we remembering the birth of John the Baptist? And the clue is that verse I just said from John chapter 3, he must increase, I must decrease. At the time that the, the feast was determined and established on the calendar as a solemnity, the church realized that June 24th was about the longest day of the lunar ca calendar of the year. It was, it was the, the day we had the most sun. But what do we know about that? After the longest day of the year, what happens to each day? They slowly decrease. They get less and less and less. And we celebrate Jesus' birth on December 25th. And what do we know about that, that day? It's the, it's the day with the least amount of light. But then at that point, the day starts to tick up again in terms of more sun, more light. So just in terms of following the, can, the calendar, it's almost as if saying June 24th is saying, I must decrease, get less light, and he must increase. So when Christ is born, the day becomes brighter. Uh, the days become longer and, and brighter. So it's kind of a fascinating look at that and why the church decided to do that. Um, one last thing I want to say about the, uh, about the statue that I just love is the fact that he looks almost, I'm not tense in a bad way, but he looks muscular and he looks very, very uh, strength. Like he's a lot of strength and a lot of, uh, like I said before, conviction. There's, there's an urgency to his mission. And this this really comes through in this particular piece of art. I think Rodin has really captured John the Baptist, at least symbolically, very, very well, um, because we don't know really if he looked like this exactly. But but the the, the idea is what we think about in terms of John the Baptist, I just think really comes through in this this uh, particular piece of work um, just beautifully. So anyway, that's where Dan is John the Baptist preaching. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please feel free to share this content.
If it makes you think about, you know, the urgency of your own convictions and your faith, that's great. That's wonderful um, to prepare the way uh, of the Lord in your own life and in the lives of those people you love. That's great. Um, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Facebook. But either way, thank you for tuning in. And we hope you will continue to do that each Friday for more Fish on Fridays. Until next time, please be good to each other and God bless. Thank you.